Bo white lam ka falsha roiv galair ani hisha. We in St McCartan's College are delighted to present our annual award ceremony, albeit in a slightly different format this year. This evening's celebration allows us to acknowledge the accomplishments and achievements of our students in the areas of academia, sports and the creative arts. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our teachers and members of staff who have made tonight's event possible. Our annual awards of 2020 will now begin with our first year Merit Awards. We hope you enjoy. The Merit Award is awarded each year to a student who teachers feel show outstanding leadership and cooperation skills, who have a very positive attitude and approach to school life, who have an exemplary work rate, who display high levels of focus and concentration in class, who display courtesy and respect to all members of the school community, and who make a very positive contribution to life in the school. The Merit Award winners for first year are Harry Murphy, Rongdara, Pat O'Shaughnessy, Rong Donal, Amit Dananaskar, Rong Dovidge, and Christopus Januskavekius, Rong Jermid. Good evening, everybody. I think over the last few months, we're all recognising the importance of school in so many different ways. No matter what happens or has happened this year, be proud of yourself, your resilience and your ability to adapt to extreme circumstances. I miss each and every one of you. I miss your smile, your fun, your antics, and I look forward to seeing you all in third year. The winners of the second year awards are Jack Lynch, Ryan McGarry, Oshin Murray and Connor Sherlock. The Marriage Award winners in third year are from Wrong Sheen, Oren Hackett, from Wrong Seamus, John Sherry, from Wrong Sivna, Michael Staunton, and the joint winners from Wrong Sean are Matthew McVicker and Porrick Clerken. Congratulations boys and well done. The recipient of the First Year Maths Award is an exceptional student. Not only did he score 100% in his Christmas test, he has also engaged very well in the online learning over the past couple of months. The First Year Maths Award goes to Andrew McQuaid. The recipient of the Third Year Maths Award is also an exceptional student. He always works to his full potential and has been a pleasure to teach over the past couple of years. This award goes to Matthew McVicker. The Geraldine Garvey Memorial Award is presented each year to the top senior maths student. This student has worked incredibly hard for the past six years and achieved the top grade in the maths pre-exam. So the award this year goes to Dylan McCaffrey. DCG award is going to Brian McIntyre. Uh, Brian is a quite an unassuming student um, but he's been extremely consistent in his approach to his studies and his excellence in his approach to his studies over the last three years that I've taught him. Um, he's shown an extremely great eye for, for design detail and design drawings and without doubt he's very highly regarded among his fellow peers in his class and I think he's a worthy recipient of this award 
So well done, Brian. I'd like to wish you all the best in all your future endeavors. This year's Construction Studies Award goes to Nevin Fowler and Jack Murphy. Both students showed passion for the subject and high levels of skill in their approach to and completion of this year's Construction Studies project. This year's Business Award goes to a very deserving student. Over the last six years, he has demonstrated an impressive ability to apply his problem-solving skills to the most challenging topics in accounting and economics. His consistently excellent standard of work, his ambition to achieve, determination and focus sets him apart from his peers and makes him a fitting winner of this award. I know he has big plans to pursue what will be a promising career in the field of accounting and finance. I wish him well in his future studies, and I take great pleasure in announcing the overall winner of the St. McCartan's Business Award for 2020, a sixth year student, Cahill Meehan. Well done and congratulations, Cahill. The Music Award this year is presented to acknowledge participation, application to work and development in musicianship. Over the course of this academic year and in very changed teaching and learning circumstances, these students' work and musical performance have remained consistent and of a high standard. The Music Award this year is presented to Michael McMorrow and Oren Hackett. <laughs> It gives me great pleasure to present this year's Junior and Senior Visual Art Award. This year's Junior Art Award goes to a student who has flourished as a young artist over the past three years. His mature and independent approach has seen him complete many accomplished and creative pieces of art, craft and design. This year's Junior Visual Art Award goes to Pora Clerken. This year's Senior Visual Art Award goes to a self-disciplined student who has shown great commitment and creativity across all areas and disciplines of art, craft and design during his six years of study. This year's Senior Visual Art Award goes to Jamie McPhillips. Scholar, the recipient of the Junior Public Speaking Award this year is our debate team of Matis Bokrauskas and Horik Clerken. These boys were winners in the Ulster round of the National Mace Debating Competition and won a place in the All-Ireland Final, which unfortunately didn't take place. In addition, Borg won the award for Best Speaker in the Ulster Competition in Belfast earlier this year. Congratulations, Borg and Mattis. The Senior Award for Public Speaking is to Adam Lamb and Nick Dim Kowanczyk. 
Adam and Nicodem have represented the school at local, national and international level. Adam topped the pole for the school in the senior mates debating competition held in UCD earlier in the year. While Nicodem represented St. McCartans and Ireland in the Model United Nations programme in association with Harvard University and Yale University in America, and Nicodem won the overall award for best speaker. Congratulations to all our worthy winners. the Junior and Senior Creative Writing Awards. Again, these awards go to, to very deserving students. To help foster creativity among Irish teenagers during this current crisis, Irish novelist John Boyne ran a short story competition. This year's Junior Creative Writing Award goes to first year student, Rory Conway. Rory's entry in particular captured attention Rory's story, titled The Encounter, is a story full of adventure and mystery, with a cliffhanger that will leave readers in suspense, eagerly awaiting a follow-up. A captivating and engaging read indeed. Congratulations and well done to you, Rory. Creative Writing Award goes to fifth year student Jamie Donoghue. Jamie recently won a place in a creative writing masterclass with Edna O'Brien Young Writers Competition. In a competition to win a residential writing workshop in University College Dublin, the judges said Jamie was shortlisted as his writing stood tall. Jamie's entry for this year's writing residence in our school was also outstanding. And as Jamie's teacher, I thoroughly enjoy reading his creative writing pieces. Congratulations and well done to you, Jamie. It is my privilege to present the Junior and Senior Poetry Awards. These awards go to two very deserving students. Poetry Aloud is an annual poetry speaking competition open to all post-primary students. Poems are recited from memory at all stages of the competition. We were delighted that the Poetry Aloud Regional Heats 2019 took place once again in our school in October. The recipient for this year's Junior Poetry Award is second year student Daniel Keelan. Daniel entered in the junior category with wonderful performances of the prescribed poem Cows at Dugart by Jane Clark and his chosen poem to recite Patrick Havanagh's In Memory of My Father. Daniel turned up to all of our practices and always put in his best effort. Congratulations and well done to you Daniel. to present the Senior Poetry Award to transition year student Finn McElwyn. Finn did extremely well in the intermediate category of the competition and reached the Poetry Loud National semi-finals. Finn did our school very proud with his exquisite recitations of the prescribed poem Burra Peninsula by Ethna Strong and Finn's chosen poem to perform The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. Congratulations and well done to you Finn. to uh, present the award for the Senior History Award this year. It goes to a student who has worked very diligently all year long and who completed an outstanding research study report on his grandfather uh, who was uh, actively involved in the War of Independence. The award for the Senior History 
Student of the Year this year goes to Conal McHugh. All-Ireland Finals in their respective events. Well done. years Jack Murphy has represented the school in both cross country and track and field. Recently Jack has taken up pole vaulting. He is the first athlete from the school to compete in pole vault and last year he won an Ulster medal and represented the school in the All-Ireland pole vaulting final. Well done Jack and the best of luck in your future pole vaulting career. Soccer Player of the Year is going to Bobby Walker. Uh, Bobby is receiving this award um, due to his athleticism, his speed, his ability to take on players and going forward and he was always a constant goal threat for us. So I'd like to wish Bobby all the best in all his future athletic endeavours and no doubt he will improve and build upon his already uh, great skill level. So well done Bobby. for the under 18 soccer player of the year. This player has made a huge improvement in skills and techniques over the last 12 months and has been instrumental in the team reaching the Cavan Monaghan League final this year which unfortunately wasn't played due to uh, recent events. The under 18 soccer player of the year award this year for 2020 goes to Ryan Gallagher. Hello everyone, my name is Gareth Coyle and I'm here to present the Basketball Player of the Year Awards. Basketball is a minority sport in Sipper Curtis College, but for those students who get involved, they do so with a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of energy for the game. I would like to acknowledge the work of our head coach, Mr. Andrew Brown, for all the time and effort and dedication that he puts into the training of our teams to such a high level. We have four teams in our college at under 19, under 16, first year and second year level and we do really well in the Northeast League year on year. The four players who are getting the awards have, will do so because they've excelled on the court of play and are tremendous teammates. The four winners are at under 19 level, Sebastian Nugles, at under 16 level, Alian Joyce, at second year level, Johnny Wright, at first year level, Andrew Stewart. Congratulations and well done gentlemen.
saw the sun begin to dim and felt that winter wind blow cold a man learns who was there for him when the glitter fades and the walls won't hold cause from then rubble what remains can only be what's true if all was lost there's more I gained because it led me back to you from now on these eyes will not be blinded by the lights from now on Let's wait, wait till, till tomorrow, tomorrow starts tonight. Tonight. Let this promise in me start like an anthem in my heart from now on. From now on. I shall paint with kings, kings and queens, the politicians praise my name. But those are some of the nice dreams, but the pitfalls of the man I became. For years and years, I chased their tears, the greatest we have always needed more. But when I stop, and see you here I remember who all this was And from now on These eyes will not be blinded by lights From now on What's waiting till tomorrow starts tonight It starts tonight Let this promise in me start like an anthem in my heart From now on From now on From now on And we will come back home And we will come back home Oh yeah And we will come back home And we will come back home
It's my pleasure to once again present the St McCartan's College Handballer of the Year Award. And this year saw success for the SEM at provincial level in handball with Eustace Dambinskis, Niall McKenna, Tiernan O'Rourke, Aidan Cunningham and Sean Callan all winning provincial titles in the 60 by 30 court and the 40 by 20 court. But this year's Handballer of the Year has won every title available in college's handball since he joined the school as a first year some six years ago. It's an accolade that has never been achieved before by any student anywhere in Ireland and it's an accolade I feel will never be achieved again by any student anywhere in Ireland. He's the best young player that I have ever had the pleasure to watch play our ancient game and the 2020 St McCartan's College Handballer of the Year is Owen McGinty. nominees for the Pearl of the Year Award were both in their junior Rio Cup squad at the start of school year. They also played integral roles in their teams in the Indoor Hurling League for first and second years and there's no doubt they would have been on to represent the SEM in the Malin Cup at the end of March had that competition gone ahead. They are Luke Oini McKenna and Luke Q McKenna of True Gales. At senior case and shield level we have lead trainer of Malin Harps and Jack Murphy of True Gales as nominees. They're both hard working energetic players that drove the team forward. The same can be said for a winner of the Hurler of the Year Award, and that is Emmett Walsh. This is Emmett's second time picking up the award. Emmett has won Ulster Minor Hurling League with Mon and Harps, and a Senior Development League with Contibbert. As well as that, Emmett has represented Mon in the senior level, and was a school's nominee for the Ulster School's All-Star Trials. Well done, Emmett. This year's Dalton Cup team went unbeaten all the way to the semi-final of the competition where they were due to play some Pats Maharaa. Unfortunately this game did not go ahead due to the pandemic, however the team made huge progress and done themselves and the school extremely proud throughout the year. Each game was a team effort, however we had a number of standout performers, namely Luke McKenna from True, who was our captain and was outstanding at centre back, and John McChrystal from Mon and Harps, who scored a number of crucial goals throughout the year. However this year's Player of the Year was outstanding in every game. And dug us out a number of holes. He broke up many attacks, won many kickouts, and even got himself forward for a number of scores. This year's player of the year from Clonus is Thomas Mulhall. Well done, Thomas. This year's Cornell panel played a total of eight games with our only defeat coming in the semi-final competition against Oma CBS. This group of lads continue to make great progress and we remain well on course to meet our end target to compete for the Glory Cup in 2024. There were a number of outstanding performers on the panel this year. Tom Doherty from Mahan, Jack Lynch from Honor Harps and Tommy Mann from Scotstown all are excellent campaigns. Two first-year students, Donica Connolly from Scotstown and Luke McKenna from True, had excellent debut seasons in the Black and Armour. But there was one player who shone above all else in the panel this year. For his incredible athleticism, his very high skill level and his ability to read the game, he's well deserving of this award. He was our team captain and he led by example both on the training pitch and gym games, always looking to bring out the best in his fellow team members. The winner of the Corner Note Player of the Year for 2020 from the Modern Harps Club is Sean Cow. Well done Sean. This year's Ocean McGrath Cup team competed in a very difficult group. They competed against St Pat's Mahara, St Coleman's of Neary and St Patrick's Academy of Dungannon. 
unfortunately, due to two narrow defeats, a last minute goal to St. Pat's Mahara, and a narrow defeat to the Sankomans of Nuri meant that this team failed to progress to the cup competition, despite having a comprehensive victory over St. Pat's Academy of Dungannon. Unfortunately, the Shield competition could not proceed due to COVID-19. I would personally like to thank all the players for their hard work, their dedication and commitment to training and matches and to the same jersey throughout the year. I would also like to thank the coaches who assisted me with this team, Mark O'Connor and Shane Trainer. Throughout the campaign, there were many standout performances. Notably, Nathan McGill of the True Gales Club and Sean Callan from Mon and Harps. But this year's Ushie McGrath Cup Player of the Year award goes to an excellent athlete, a person who dominated every game. It is a credit to this player that, despite the opposition, they had to put their best player on him. This player has got a very bright future ahead of him in the game, not just for his club, but also for the Monaghan minor team. The Ushie McGrath Cup Player of the Year award goes to Dylan O'Reilly from the T-Holland Club. Congratulations, Dylan. This year's Ranna Fast Cup panel had a very positive campaign winning the Shield for the second successive year. Mr Grugan, Mr McInnes, B and I would like to take this opportunity to thank the players for their hard work, commitment and the passion which has shown for the Sam jersey throughout the year. There were a number of outstanding performers during this year's campaign. Sean Trainer from Scotstown, Louis Kelly from True and Dara McKenna from De Holland all deserving worthy mentions. However, this year's winner was outstanding in every game and he is certainly one for the future. He is a tremendous talent and he has already represented his county at minor level, winning an Ulster Minor Championship medal last year and scoring what proved to be the pivotal goal in the final. This year's Ranafast Cup Player of the Year from the Emmy Vale Club is Michael Hamill. safe and well. This year's McCrory campaign started off well, however for a second year in a row we were defeated in the playoff after extra time and as a group we were left with a lot of what ifs unfortunately. As a management team we'd like to thank the group for their immense efforts this year. To the six years who are leaving us I'd particularly like to thank you for six years of honesty and loyalty to the same jersey. You lads have given great service to your school and you've made your mark. There was one piece of silverware that has eluded us for many years in Ulster College's football and the fact that you boys delivered our first ever corner road title means you'll never be forgotten in the school and you've left a lasting legacy. You may be leaving the classrooms and playing fields behind you but you'll always be sent men. I wish you every success in your future endeavours. I'd like to acknowledge the huge amount of work put in by our fellow coaches Paddy Hughes, Conor McIlvanny and David Shevlin. I know the lads appreciate your coaching and they became better players as a result of it. Once again, this year's McCrory Cup Player of the Year was chosen by the players themselves. This makes it extra special to be chosen by your peers. Two players that scored well in the voting, but came up short, were Chrissy Flood and Lachlan Bauer. Both players had a great year for us, and indeed have had a brilliant six years representing the school. The player who has voted the McCrory Cup Player of the Year for this season is the very deserving Carrie Gallagher. It's been an absolute pleasure to watch Carol's progression over the last six years and I have to say in my time coaching and playing in St McCartans he's one of the best talents to have come through the school. His feeling and his ability to take players on have been a feature of his play throughout his time here. These are seen as two of the dying arts in the game so his ability to do these with ease makes him stand out from the crowd. He has a real desire and drive to compete which he needs as very often opposition teams look to curb his influences. This has helped mould his mentality and I've never seen him back down from the challenge, which is a huge credit to him. So many congratulations to our very deserving winner, Carrie Gallagher.
Again, you share of the Carriage Sport Tool. Gary Coyle here, and I am about to present the prestigious overall sports person of the year for 2020 for St. McCartney's College. But before I do so, there are a few groups of people I would like to acknowledge for their unwavering support towards the Sporting Extracurricular Program in St. McCartney's College. A few short months ago, we all took sport for granted. However, with the onset of COVID-19 and the ensuing lockdown, I feel that there will be a greater appreciation for sport and physical activity when, hopefully, in the not too distant future, we can all return to the court or field of play and showcase our sporting prowess again. The first group of people I would like to acknowledge are our student body. You, the students, vote with, you feet, vote with your feet. You attend all the training sessions, you go to all the games. Without your participation, our college will be in a poorer place. You add greatly to the soul of St. McCartney's College. The next group of people I would like to acknowledge are the parents of our students. You act as personal taxis, dropping off and picking up your son after training sessions and games. You act as personal chefs, making sure that your son is well fueled up, ready for the next activity. You act as personal laundrettes, ensuring that the wet, mucky, sweaty gear is washed and cleaned and ready for the next day's activity. You also act as the primary sports psychologist as you motivate your son to participate in our games and activities and you also deal with the high of victory and the downs of, def of defeat. We all offer you a meal that will us more for ensuring that your son reaches his potential in our sports. The next group of people I would like to acknowledge are my colleagues, the staff of St. McCartney's College. We are blessed that so many of you give up so much of your valuable time to go out and train all our school teams. Without your participation, without your sacrifice, our you are so understanding, but also there is an enormous responsibility on our students to make sure that they catch up on any work that they can set up. The last group of people I would like to thank is our principal, Mr. Raymond McHugh, our deputy principal, Ms. Catherine Mulhern, and our college board of management. They sanction and approve every activity that takes place. They allow our students and teachers to go off and represent the college as proudly as they do. They value and understand the importance that our extracurricular activity brings to the life of St. McCartney's College. To all the groups I've mentioned, we thank you so much for all your help and support. And finally, to the 2020 Sports Person of the Year Award itself. This year, we decided to reward the recipient not only for his sporting ability in the school year 2019-2020, but we decided to recognise all his achievements to date over six years in St. McCartney's College. He is a living representation of our school motto, Fortis et Fidelis, strong and faithful. He is both strong mentally and physically. He never backs down from a challenge. He's very loyal. He never lets himself down, his teammates, his family, or the school community. He has played in every school GAA team from first year to sixth year, with his proudest moment coming in second year when he was on the Cornog winning team. This will be a night never be forgotten, as it was the first time this trophy was won in the college's history. He has also rep represented the college at both basketball and soccer to very high levels. He's also a double, Ulster double winning uh, championship winner with Kenny Monaghan, and he was a county minor championship winner with his club Emmy Vale. The 2020 St. McCartney's College Sports Person of the Year is Carl Gallagher. Congratulations, Carl, and well done on your achievements. We hope you will use this as a springboard for future sporting success, both at third level, club, and at national level. Well done. Junior Cycle students have received special recognition for their academic excellence, hard work and consistently high results since joining our school in 2017. Our school academic tracking system has shown that they have performed to an exceptional standard over the last three years. In addition to academic excellence, 
these students must be commended for the following. Their ambition to achieve, their ability to inspire others within the year group, their motivation, work ethic and sheer determination to succeed. I want to recognise too the positive influence they have had within the year group as a whole. I take great pleasure in announcing the overall winners of the Junior Cycle Academic Achievement Award 2020. And the deserving recipients are Horik Clerken, Ethan Cunningham, Oren Hackett, Matthew McVicker and Michael Staunton. Well done boys and congratulations. Good evening. It is my privilege to make the Senior Academic Award presentation. This award is presented to five six-year students who've excelled in the area of academic excellence during their time here in the college and is based on information gathered from academic tracking of the year group since first year. Before I name the recipients of this award, I wish to take this opportunity to thank the class of 2020 for the contribution they have made to our school community over the last six years. As a U group, you were always full of personality and vitality, two great hallmarks in any year group. As your year ahead, I will miss you. And I hope that the skills and knowledge that you acquired during your time here in St. McCartans will allow you to be eminently capable to deal with whatever life throws at you. Back to the award in hand. The recipients of the Senior Academic Award have shown great focus and determination during their time here in St. McCartans. These key skills are requirements for academic excellence. And I know that you five gentlemen will bring these skills with you into the future. The recipients of the Senior Academic Award for 2020 are Michael Meehan, Cahill Meehan, Connell McHugh, Christopher Flood, and Brian McAteer. Congratulations and well done lads. And on behalf of the entire school community, I wish you and your fellow classmates, the class of 2020, all the very best as you head off to begin this new part of your life's journey. Thank you. Award for the best junior certificate goes to Ushing Murr. Ushing is a hard-working and committed student who has excelled at his studies over the course of the junior cycle. It is my pleasure to present the best junior certificate award to Ushing Murr. joint winners to this year's Best Leaving Certificate Award for 2019. Both students brought so much to the school academically, artistically and in the world of sport. I would now like to call on Miss Mulhern to present the award to the first recipient. The first recipient of our Leaving Cert Award goes to Ryan Donnelly. Ryan has made a significant contribution to the life of our school by way of his academic studies and musical Ryan's performance on piano of Lou Velo Beyonce at our award ceremony last year was most certainly a highlight. It is my great pleasure to present the joint Leaving Cert Award to Ryan Donnelly. The second recipient follows a family tradition by way of this award and added so much to the life of the school during his six years with us. He's a previous winner of a national title in the BT Young Scientist Award. He has represented our school in the playing fields and the basketball courts and he has achieved significant success in every examination that he has taken. He is also a winner of a UCD Entrance Scholarship Award. My pleasure to award the joint Best Leaving Cert Award 
for 2019 to Lorcan O'Rourke. Agalti, my hesh mahori, no one shori, no gas of ray vigil. J. Eve, girl my hoggy, pleasant shaman a shah hasira, no gas boil him of wake his fee in a gawel, as curl a horse dumb black with pot chan. Students, parents, teachers, Mr. McHugh, and of course, most YouTube watchers wondering why this video has appeared in the recommended. I'd first like to say a word of thanks for having been invited back to take part and for yourselves tuning into the ceremony. I hope you're all making the most of your time off walking off school. Netflix is booming at the moment, so I figure you must be. I'm aware that, that the junior cert and even cert won't be taking place as normal this year. For some of you, that must be very stressful. For others, happy days. Uh, these are unprecedented events, which means that there's nobody ready to hold the torch and light the way ahead. Everything's improvised. And it's that theme of improvisation that I want to discuss in my speech today. So you attend secondary school for six years. Over the course of those six years, you wear the same uniform, bar the change in tie, you sit in the same direction studying a similar set of subjects with the same teachers. So I, I know that some of you don't like where this speech is going already but I have a point to make so please allow me a moment. Between the ages of 12 and 18 you've got a lot of points to score, a lot of FIFA to play and a lot of all around mischief to get up done, rightly so. So why is it important to you then when you have to apply the rules of the Tishul Ginejuk or when um, Polar form has to be converted to Cartesian form, or why the theme of foreshadowing is, is key to the unravelling of Shakespeare's Macbeth. Why? So there is an official answer to that, and there's a fair amount of truth in it, that your parents, your, um, your principal, your uh, teachers, and the Minister for Education want you to be socially, physically, mentally, and culturally informed and developed individuals and citizens. We've all received that answer in some form or another, and to be honest, I wasn't really that satisfied by it. <clears throat> the truth is, there is no answer that there is no one answer that applies to all students in all circumstances. You have to find your own reason to learn and your own reason to study. You have to find your own angle for your subjects. So I say, study English not because you want to get a H two in the Leaving Cert. Learn English, study English because you you want to be able to express your opinions without beating around the bush. Learn to do a trade and profit and loss account, not because you want an O one one in business, but because someday maybe you want to be self-employed. Learn French, not to get straight A's, but because when you go to Bordeaux on holidays, you want, and parents, please cover your ears for this one, you want to be able to buy a local, chat up a local. You have to find your angle. So finding your angle isn't quite enough. You need balance and you need reason to keep going. And to be honest, I kind of messed up with the balance in sixth year. I got up at 7 in the morning for school and didn't finish studying until half 10 at night. It was a mess. I drove myself halfway to insanity and pulled over with boredom. So learn from my mistake. Continue with football training. Continue playing guitar. Continue playing the old game of FIFA. You need some sort of balance. Now, I know there are plenty of students that don't have that uh, overdoing it, uh, issue. They, they don't need someone over their shoulder and encouraging them to take a break from all that work they're doing. If anything, they need encouragement to, to do the work in the first place. And to that student, I suggest some quick arithmetic. I'll do it for you. It's not a popular suggestion, but, but hopefully effective. You've got six hours of, of, of class a day. Let's say you do two hours of homework. You've got roughly 30 weeks of school a year. Over the, over the course of six years, that's 8,000 hours. Now, other than the odd laugh you manage to get out of a classmate, that's, that's 8,000 hours down the chute. <laughs> so if you don't put in the effort and you decide, let's say, after school that you want to be a PE teacher, uh, uh, you want to study business or you want to be a, a GP, who knows, and you haven't put the effort in to get there, that might not be on the cards. Now, I don't want to be cliched. But I am by nature, so get over it. You get to design your own life. Make it worth living. Now in Sims, Saints Row and Fallout 4, you get to customise your own character, right? You get to paint his eyebrows blue, stretch his nose, give him a mohawk and make his legs bend in all directions. It's up to you. 
as you wish. In school, you get to uh, say what you mean. You get to write well. You get to learn foreign languages. You get to design your physical build and you get to learn the laws of physics. School is that same customization process. You get to add feature by feature, day by day, to your liking. So I'll finish on a question. Do you like the character you're building? Thank you for your time. I've been through a history of the weekly in class for Carton. Lurk and Aurora is on him dumb. I saw Broad and Downarm of a Osfer Gore, my ear Dalton is Scully. I do spoil him of wake as a gal, like Octon and Dagger and Oakodge raked and Oksha. It's hard to believe that this time last year I would have been in a school full of students and the only social distancing guidelines were to stay well away from Mr. McKee's office after Castle Blaney loss. Since then, a lot has changed and I don't think anyone could have predicted the situation that we're now in. For the Leaving Cert class, congratulations on finishing your study at the SEM. It's a pity that you all had separate on such an abrupt note and missed out on your well-deserved graduation night and also the Debs. But knowing the strength of the community that is the SEM, I'm sure that that's not the end and I know that you will all only enjoy the celebrations as a year group even more when this is all over. I'd say many of you are happy with the outcome of the Leaving Cert, but there's also no doubt that many people will be disappointed, having put in all the time and effort for one exam. The best consolation that I can give is that none of your work would go in vain. For example, as a first year engineering student, I've relied countless times on the physics and the maths that I learned in Leaving Cert, and they've just been central to get me through my final exams. I wish you all the best with your apprenticeships or CEO choices. I'd say it's a very apprehensive and stressful time as you wait for results, but that's just not an excuse to go around shaving your heads. I myself would like to take a moment to sincerely thank each and every St. McCartan's teacher who's had their doors open to students over the last six years for their hard work, determination and time given to help us grow and mature into young adults. They continue to shape the knowledge and learning of students and deserve credit for their work inside the classroom and through extracurricular activities. The last thing I'll say is that the closure of the school due to the virus probably seemed like a dream come true to most people at first. But as time goes on, I think it's fair to say that we all realise that our days in the SEM were some of the best times in our lives and that we give anything to be united together in black and amber again. There's no doubt that the SEM has shaped who we are and has helped us become the men we are today. We may become separated along the way and communication may cease, but a part of us will always belong in North Monaghan up on the hill. It's in times like these when it seems tough that we must stick to our motto and be fortis et fidelis, strong and faithful, not only to those around you, but also to yourself. Gurmila Maigav, Agaspani Giaship Glor. Good evening. I'm delighted to have been invited as chairperson of the Board of Management to announce the recipients of this year's Spirit of Scullia Award. Before doing so, I'd like to take this opportunity on behalf of all of the members of the board to congratulate our Principal, Mr McHugh, our Deputy Principal, Ms Mulhern, and all of our teachers, students and parents on the manner in which they have dealt with the unprecedented challenges which the 2019-2020 school year presented. In deciding on candidates for Spurred in the school year, we look for a number of things. In particular, we want students who bring a very positive attitude to their activities within the school and, and students who have overcome perhaps particular challenges to make them a good influence in St. McCartan's College. The first of this year's recipients has just completed his fourth year in the school. I've been told that during the first three years, he spent quite a bit of time in Mr. McHugh's office and in the office of the year head. Third year in particular wasn't an easy year for him, which he underwent surgery, but he came back to school in September with a very different approach and a very positive attitude towards making the best of his year in the LCA. And he did so in style. He had a key part in our school musical, which we hope we will see in, at the beginning of the next school year. 
and in every way demonstrated a marvellous, positive, involved approach to his year in LCA. That's Adam McBride. So Adam is the first recipient of the Spirit in the School Award. Our second recipient had just completed his fifth year in the school and he too had major challenges to face, had challenges to face. He had a number of serious health issues, but despite that, he, he continued to achieve at a very high level academically and was very positive and jovial, with his very positive and jovial demeanour, did a great contribution to maintaining that spirit that we want to see in the school throughout the year. So our second recipient of Spirit in Scalia is Liam Doyle. Well done to both Liam and Adam, and thank you for maintaining the spirit that makes Simon Cartons such a special place. Heshmahori, Scullery, Furin Scholar, will get Falcha Kaji Gradan the Nushna Gavilas Fiha. And thank you all for joining us here this evening for an awards ceremony, which is obviously a little different to the norm. And I think at this point it's only appropriate, on the behalf of the school community, that I offer our deepest condolences to the members of the school community who have been bereaved in the last number of weeks. You know that our thoughts and our prayers are with you all at this difficult time. When the awards group met to plan this event, we agreed that this academic year would not be totally defined by the last 12 weeks, that is, since schools closed on March the 12th. Because this year started with such vibrancy. As a school, we welcomed a large group of new first years, we welcomed a new deputy principal, two new assistant principals, a cohort of new teachers, a new board of management, a new approach to transition year, and the prospects of a very ambitious school musical. We look forward to the commencement of a school extension, for the development of our school facilities and our state examination students perform very well. We look forward to so many things at the beginning of this school year. You've heard earlier about the many successes our students enjoyed during the year. As you saw, these successes were on a local, on a national and an international stage. Our students brought tremendous credit to themselves, their parents and our school through their efforts. We were notified in early February that the school would undergo a whole school inspection. This began on March the 9th and finished on March 12th, the day the school closed. We have not yet received the report, however, I was very proud of the school's effort in the lead up to the inspection and during the inspection. But one of the most gratifying aspects of our inspection was hearing about how the students and our parents spoke so positively about our school. I thank them all for that. Then came the announcement on March the 12th that schools were going to close. Little did we know that we would not see our students on the premises for the remainder of the school year. Little did we know that our musical would not go on stage when expected, that our Dalton and Brock teams would not get to play in their semi-finals, or our senior soccer team would not get to play in their final. Little did we know that our leaving cert and our junior certs would not have a chance to set their exams. School going online for such a prolonged period of time would never have crossed even our wildest imagination. But May I take this opportunity to commend how our school community has adapted to and faced this challenge. Teachers deserve great credit for their innovative use of the various online and cloud-based platforms that are available to us as a, as a school. Students deserve great credit for the way so many of you embraced the change and continue to engage in your school work. Parents, can I thank you also for your help. You helped by contacting us with suggestions as to how to improve on online learning and teaching. You tried to keep your sons, our students, focused and on task. You contributed in such a positive way to our online meetings. On behalf of all of our teachers, I thank you, parents. May I also mention Monaghan Education Centre on the director, Dahi McCaig. Monaghan Education Centre also helped support schools and helped teachers adapt to the new norm. I'd like also to acknowledge the support the school receives from our Board of Management. Our Board, as you know, is chaired by Porrick Duffy and consists of Dermot McChrystal, Helen Mallon, Patricia Clark, Emer Conway, Patrick Meehan and Paul West. They are entrusted by Bishop Duffy with the overall management of St McCartan's College. This they do in a very positive and proactive way. And on behalf of the school community, I thank them all. 
I'd also like to say a word about our sixth years. They embraced the challenges of online learning in such a very positive way since March the 12th. Since then, they've had to listen to the various possibilities that presented themselves by way of their exams from Plan A to Plan B to Plan C. But the vast majority of our class of 2020 worked to the end. Their time here is through, but we will meet again at a time that is suitable, a time that is safe. We will meet to mark their excellent contribution to the SEM, their school. They will leave here knowing that they have made a very positive contribution to the life of St McCartan's College. They leave here knowing that they will be back to celebrate with us and to mark the contribution they have made. A mo rong fiha fiha, verbu agoni. After 10 weeks away from school, we all know that our students need school. Our teachers need school. We need the social contact. We need the sense of togetherness, the sense of belonging, the sense of community that is such a part of this place. Before I conclude, can I say a special word of thanks to everybody who was involved in organising this year's awards event. The organising committee was chaired by Deputy Principal Miss Mulhern and included Miss Kirk, Mr West, Miss Gallagher, Miss Monaghan, Mr Grugan, Mr Murphy and Mr Coyle. Thanks to all the teaching staff members for your help all year, for your work and your professionalism all year. Also to our office staff, Sarah Boyle and Laura Cullen, and our school technician, Jimmy Cosgrove, for all your help and support this year. This school has faced difficulties in the past. The first students came here in 1848 during the Irish famine. In 1918, the school was closed due to the Spanish flu when millions died throughout Europe and the world. In 1947, the school was closed for weeks due to snow. What we have experienced over the last number of weeks is not the norm. It too will pass. Our students will tell their children and their grandchildren about the time the school was closed for months. They will tell them of how much they missed school and how much they want to be back to the normal. We will be back. It may be different. We are currently planning for a return to school. Because a school without students and a school without teachers is just another building. It's not really a school and it's certainly not the same. We will be back and I look forward so much to the day when normality returns to St McCartan's College. Thank you all again for joining us. Good day, Gokdin Aslan, Verbua Agoni.